uh, called the arousal cycle. And this is about the physical and emotional arousal as you escalate up towards fight or flight. Now, we're going to say, before you get to this number one, this is the trigger. So your heart rate going up here and your quality of judgment going down. But before you get to this trigger, we're going to say that you are feeling pretty good. You've been eating healthy. You've been getting exercise in. You've been spending time socially with family, with friends, with people that give you some inspiration. Life is going pretty well. And you walk into a situation and somebody says or does something that pisses you off. Pushes your buttons, gets under your skin. They're not threatening in life or anything quite that extreme or the life of somebody you care about. But, you know, they, they got you one. And if in that moment you step back, Take a breath, you pause for a moment. There's all sorts of possibilities, right? You can respond with humor, with curiosity, or with compassion, with understanding. You can get creative and look at it from different angles. You can use empathy. Um, or you can just say, you know, um, just give me a minute. I, I, I need a minute or, or five minutes to think about that, to collect my thoughts. Or maybe you're getting really heated and you say, an hour. Or it's even more intense, and you say, I, I gotta go. I'll, I'll come back and talk to you tomorrow. Right? There's all these different possibilities, but in this situation, you don't take that time. You don't take that pause. You just react and throw some words back at that person, and this back and forth argument starts out. And your blood pressure starts to go up, and your heart rate starts to go up. And you start to become more entrenched in your own position, whatever that might be. You start to hold a lot more tension in your body, your facial expression changes, your body language changes, your tone of voice is changing. And it's going back and forth and it's getting really quite intense. And as you're escalating up here, you become more egocentric. I don't deserve this. How dare you talk to me like that? Things have changed dramatically. For one thing, our quality of judgment has headed downhill. And when people are up here, well, you can still stop and walk away. You still have that possibility. You always have that possibility. But it's very different because down here, you could stop and you could think about using humor or compassion or what have you. None of those exist as options when you're up here in this really black and white mode. Things are really intense there. You're not as smart there. You don't have the creative potential there. In this situation, you don't stop here and walk away either. You escalate one more step. You cross another boundary. You say something even more hurtful. Or you say something even more intimidating. Or you do something that's more threatening. And you feel completely justified in that moment. Because they just said that, so you're justified in this. And as you cross this threshold, adrenaline floods your system. And a whole host of, uh, of other hormones are released into your body. One of them being cortisol, known as the stress hormone. When cortisol is present, platelets are released into your bloodstream. And your blood rushes into all your major muscles as your body's preparing for fight or flight. But the blood rushes into the very core of these muscles, the outside of the muscles, to actually get, get less blood and harder. Which is fantastic. If you're a caveman and you've got some wild animal coming at you, right? That animal goes with the claw at you. Well, physically, you're actually harder. And the blood that's near the surface is thicker, will clot more quickly. This is fantastic if you're the caveman getting in a fight. But if you're not a caveman, the body's still doing all of these things. And and as we escalate past here, the body will shut down whatever is necessary for survival, including the stomach, the digestive system. We start to lose our peripheral vision. Uh, our hearing depreciates. Pupils will start to dilate so you can see that wild animal better. And as people pass this number two and all this adrenaline kicks in, often people will get a headache right up around here somewhere. And they can't actually remember what started the argument. You 
people start to uh, often have a bit of confusion here as they're, as they're passing this. And this will often incense people. And as they get even more black and white in the thinking, they'll be even more, you're either a with me or you're against me. Right? It's all or nothing. As people escalate up here, up to this point where we are in this fight or flight, and then typically the quality adjustments way down here. Unless, of course, we've been drinking, and then the quality of judgment can be down here somewhere. But we're back to this headache. With this headache, it's like the more recently evolved part of our brain. The blood vessels are constricting here. We're shutting this area down because we don't need that part of the brain for survival. We don't need to stop and think about difficult math problems. We don't need to speak in a foreign language. We just need a very simple, black and white, fast, very ancient part of the brain, sometimes called the reptilian brain, or the brain stem. And it's like there's a toggle switch. And it goes fight, or flight, or freeze. So freeze is an adaptive survival response. It's just a last ditch effort. If fight doesn't work and flight doesn't work, we're left with freeze. So uh, a little National Geographic moment. We are on the African Serengeti. We've got an impala being chased by a cheetah. And the cheetah's doing one of these and it's catching up and it's catching up. And the cheetah's just about to sink its face into the back of this animal's neck. And the animal just dies. It doesn't really die. It just falls as if it's dead. And this is going into the freeze response. The heart rate goes way up. And what it does is it shuts off all of its pain receptors. And then it just falls over as if it's dead. And some uh, predators won't eat an animal that falls down as if it's dead. But the cheetah will. The cheetah will, but because it fell down as if it's dead, the cheetah doesn't need to really rip it apart or kill it. It will start to drag it back to its lair afterwards. And perhaps while it's doing that, it gets distracted by some hyenas, lion, something else. And it actually has to put the animal down. And maybe that in that moment, it actually has a chance to get up and run back into the middle of the herd. And that's precisely what it will do. It will run into the safest place it can find, the very middle of the herds, surrounded by family and friends, so to speak. And what it will do then, well, it will shake. The whole animal will shake. And what it's doing is it's expressing the trauma that it experienced from that near-death experience. And if it has time and is allowed to shake fully and completely, it moves that trauma right through its body and it's done with it. And it's free of it. It can live a full and happy life. But what happens to human beings when they go through trauma? Sometimes, whether it's a traffic accident or a soldier in Afghanistan, is they will get traumatized. But because we have this frontal lobe, most people aren't really aware of this. People will start to shake after a traumatic event. And most of us become embarrassed or afraid or both. And people will stop themselves, stop themselves from shaking. And it's like people trap that internally. So they all emotional experience needs some sort of avenue to move through us. And it helps if we do that intentionally with awareness. Whereas the, the wild animal, it just flows through us. Uh, through it. It doesn't, it doesn't really stop and think about it or notice it or go, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. Or afraid because it's like, well, what's happening to me? I feel totally out of control. So, in warfare, that would look, uh, be called shell shock, or PTSD. And here, when somebody goes into that, it's called usually a panic attack or anxiety attack, and often people end up going to the hospital. 
they freeze up and can't do anything. But in this situation, the person isn't in freeze mode, and they're not in flight mode, although the body is primed for running. They're in fight mode. But they're disconnected from the heart, they're disconnected from the high reasoning part of the brain, from consequences. They're disconnected from what they feel, either for themselves or other people. And so, the quality of judgment is way down here, so people will say and do things that are out of uh, that are out of character, that aren't really them. So, up here, the quality of judgment is down here. Now, what people do with the heart rate as they escalate up here makes a big difference. And you can see this in sports uh, or in performance on stage. Some people, when they get on the biggest stage and there's a billion people looking at them, watching them, whether it's uh, they're, you know, performing or they're uh, in some sort of sport, some people will escalate their game, they'll elevate it, and they'll actually get more focus, but they'll keep all the peripheral vision. So, uh, professional athletes will sometimes talk about how they can actually slow the whole game down, and they'll, things will actually go quieter, but they're getting more focused. They're more present, and they're still connected to everything around them. And so, this quality of judgment can actually go up before it sharply heads downhill if they go over this number two. Because if they go over this level, it becomes, they become egocentric. It becomes all about me. So some players will disappear in the Stanley Cup final in the playoffs, and some will elevate their game. Some play the best hockey of their career, or the best whatever sport it is, football or basketball or swimming or skiing, and on the, you know, the, the biggest events, that's when, they're, when they really shine. And some people get so wrapped up in winning, or so wrapped up in the finish line, that they falter. They become too egocentric. It becomes too much about me. And they lose sight of what's really important. You know, when they're uh, in the Winter Olympics and skiing, they focus on each moment along the way. They're not thinking about the finish line. They're just, every moment, every technique, everything that they're doing, every second along the way, that's all they're paying attention to. And they know if they do that really well, then they're going to get across that finish line first. But if their attention, even part of it, is on the finish line, then they have less attention for being successful in every turn. Or if they're playing tennis in every shot. And so part of what we're going to talk about during these weeks is being really present with everything you end up saying or doing so that you are in alignment with your core values. Relate to that? Does this help?